I've spent years putting my gaming setup together and it's still not complete. In fact, I think it'll always be a work in progress. That said, I have something I'm fairly happy with, and I wanted to share it in case it helps or inspires any of you. Most of these videos tend to be from Americans with very different needs and fairly deep pockets, so I wanted to give a British take for a POW gamer on a budget. Before we begin, none of the products featured here are sponsored. These have all been bought with my own money over the past few years. I had a seemingly simple goal, to get everything running through this Elgato Game Capture's HDMI import. I wanted to quickly, easily, and conveniently capture any console at any time for YouTube videos. I also needed to maintain a fairly high video quality level. It doesn't have to be absolutely one-to-one -one perfect because YouTube will compress it a bit anyway, but the cleaner the better. To throw a spanner in the works, I also wanted to be able to play retro consoles on a CRT so I could play light gun games properly while still getting high quality footage from those playthroughs. At first, I thought I was trying to have my cake and eat it, but it actually turned out to be simpler than I thought. RGB SCART was much more widely supported in Europe than America. Some consoles that don't natively offer RGB out in the US do offer it in the UK, and every modern TV in my house still has SCART inputs. Actually hooking up a console to a TV is fairly simple over here, as was converting it to HDMI for the Elgato. My SCART cables go into a TV and SCART selector which actually has a button on it specifically for telling the device whether to pass through RGB or composite. I'm guessing the composite setting's only there to resolve incompatibilities. It can be had easily on eBay for a couple of quid. From there, the splitter's composite out goes to my CRT, while the RGB SCART out goes to this cheap, unbranded HD upscaler slash converter. It was about £25 from Amazon, it's no open source scan converter or frame meister, but for a guy with 3,000 subscribers averaging a couple of hundred views per video, it gets the job done nicely. It does push everything out in widescreen, so when I'm editing my footage, I have to manually squeeze it back into 4x3. It also displays this really annoying notification describing the input and output, which hangs around for far too long every time you switch resolution or device. But honestly, those are things I can live with for now. The only thing it struggles with is my N64. First up, my Nintendo 64 is running an EverDrive version 2.5 with pretty much the entire NTSC library on it, which thankfully doesn't cause any issues with my PAL console. The EverDrive was £90, but when I compared that to the price of a Conker's Bad Fur Day or a Paper Mario, it suddenly seemed very reasonable. The N64 is using a custom S video cable from consolegoods.co.uk. I bought this back in 2016 for a tenner including postage. It's advertised as being specially wide for PAL N64s, so you don't get an overly bright picture, and it looks gorgeous on my CRT, but my cheap upscaler can struggle with it. It looks great on static screens, but when it's in motion things can get very blurry, with some games faring better than others. Considering I rarely record N64 games, the console's notorious for having bad video quality anyway, and the cable looks stunning when I'm sat playing it on my CRT, I'm very happy with my purchase. There are RGB modders in the UK, so if you're wanting more then there are options, just bear in mind there's only so much you can do with a low resolution image that the console itself is blurring. My Mega Drive's also using an EverDrive, the £35 X3. This time I did run into a couple of region locks, for example with Story of Four and Adventures of Batman and Robin. My Mega Drive does have a 60Hz switch mod, but this doesn't seem to offer a region bypass. I just went online and replaced a handful of games that had issues with the European ROMs instead. The SCART cable is a £30 pack-a-punch from RetroGamingCables.co.uk. I ordered this because my generic £5 eBay one produced really visible jail bars, which this cable has almost completely eliminated. I can't overstate the leaping quality. I even felt strongly enough to tweet about it. These PlayStations share a SCART cable because they have the same input, but what's interesting is it has these inputs for light guns on there. This is what makes it possible for me to get my time crisis on while still capturing high quality footage. It really is as simple as just plug in and go with this. My fat PS2's disk drive died a while back, so that console's been hard drive modded to run imports, fan translations, and other curiosities. I also have a SCART cable for my Dreamcast to use a light gun for House of the Dead 2 and Confidential Mission, but 9 times out of 10 I use VGA out into a little generic £4 HDMI converter box. 
Not every Dreamcast game supports VGA, but my Dreamcast is modded. The disk drive's been replaced with a microSD card slot. This gives me access to pretty much every NTSC Dreamcast game via GDMU and, as an added bonus, the utility for adding games patches them for VGA compatibility. An optical disk drive emulator will run you around £50 on eBay. Next, my GameCube, which has a £5 AliExpress SD to SB2 clone and a £20 action replay with an SD card reader in the memory card slot so I can launch into Swiss. PAL games were often 50Hz, so ran around 18% slower than their NTSC counterparts. They were also often 480i instead of 480p, making them look noticeably worse. This setup gives me the full-speed American games, and Swiss can force most of them into 480p for me. My GameCube's also connected via HDMI. I have a £40 GC HDMI clone from AliExpress. The picture quality from it is absolutely stunning, and I'm really happy with it, although it does add this resolution notification which is annoying when I'm already dealing with one of those from my upscaler. On the bottom of the GameCube is a Game Boy Player housing a £37 EZ Flash Omega 4, giving me access to every Game Boy, Color, and Advance game. Using the Game Boy interface through Swiss, I can get a really crisp, clean image for easy capture. The GameCube and Dreamcast both run into an HDMI switch connected to the upscaler, which has both SCAR and HDMI inputs. My Elgato doesn't support 480p over HDMI, giving an error message when I try, so I use this to get a signal the Elgato will accept. Also connected to the same switch is my PS3. The PS3's HDCP can't be turned off, but this upscaler handily strips that, allowing me to capture from it. If I'm recording PS1 footage, 9 times out of 10 I'll use my PS3 in its emulation-based backwards compatibility for that. In a similar fashion, I use my Wii U to record Wii games over HDMI for the highest quality capture I can get from actual hardware. As an aside, this is Ghost Squad on the Wii, and it's an awesome light gun game you should really check out. The rest is kind of boring because the PS4, Xbox 360, and Xbox One are all just HDMI out natively, assuming you remember to disable the PS4's HDCP in the settings menu. All of these HDMI cables run to one of two switches. The output from those two switches goes to a third. That's connected to a splitter which sends one copy of the signal to my TV and the other to my Elgato. The HDMI out from my Elgato connects to my second PC monitor for live streams, if I ever get around to them. The general idea here is that I can turn a console on, the signal will be auto-detected, and the switches will take care of the rest without me needing to do anything. I do want to make some upgrades. My cable management is horrendous. I want to get some more Kallax shelf dividers, but they've jumped from £7 the last time I bought some to £9 each now. The Elgato I have can only do 30fps at 1080p. If I want 60fps, I have to knock the capture down to 720p. I only have one wall socket in here, so I'm constantly swapping labelled plugs around too. I'd love to get a cheaper mode alternative for my Saturn so I can run games from an SD card rather than an optical disk drive that will inevitably fail on me. Likewise, I'm keeping an eye out for a viable PSIO competitor too. No doubt the number of switches I'm using degrades the image or adds some latency, so I wouldn't mind getting a 16-in, one-out beast like Slope's Game Room recently bought. I think the PlayStation 5 will inevitably change a lot of that. It won't fit in my Kallax unit, for starters. 4K PCIe Elgatos have hit the market. I'd need to actually buy a 4K TV with a 120Hz variable refresh rate, high dynamic range, and HDMI 2.1. I don't think any of my Switches support 4K or HDMI 2.1. Yeah, that could get very expensive very quickly at a time when our priority is a mortgage deposit, so don't expect me to do that anytime soon. I doubt I'll even be buying a next-gen console for a while yet. It also poses big questions about what to do with my physical games collection now so many of my consoles are running often superior NTSC versions of games off hard drives or micro SD cards, but I'd prefer not to think about that right now. So that's the setup as it stands right now. As I say, it will probably change as we go into the future, especially with 4K being right on the horizon. But for right now, it is meeting my needs, and you should be able to set this up fairly easily yourself if you'd like something similar at home.